All right, what's up, people? We should be live here for another Wednesday Bridge Quiz right here on YouTube. Uh, let me know you can hear and see me, folks. We are live for a little bit of uh, slam practice again uh, for online spot. Had a little bit of trouble with my lighting, so you might see a little shadows behind. I'm figuring that out as I go, as I'm on the road. But uh, say hi in the chat, folks, and we will get started. Make sure we're all set and see what... Uh, what kind of trouble we can get into with some really strong hands that we have over here so and again apologies for the the lighting issues folks weird weird spot today everybody out there okay so here's how today's gonna go i'm gonna occasionally refer to uh some of our conventional agreements when we get to them for example uh here are our kind of notes after afterwards we're going to talk a little bit about jacoby tuno trump and we're going to talk about when this is going to work for us major suit slams is where we're going to be talking about this and let that be a lesson to you folks that's probably where we're going to be focused a lot on today but what i'm going to do uh, is bid these hands with you if you notice you're sitting at a bidding table on bridge base at the moment and across from you is a player called nyc pro <laughs> that's me and you are going to be scuba pro this is one of my old old accounts from way back in the day uh, i'm an avid scuba diver so this was a pretty obvious uh, name for me as a, as a bridge player here so this is your hand you are actually the dealer and we're going to start this off. So I think we can all see that we're going to open one spade. And then it's going to come back to partner. And ooh, let's get that sound out of there. Uh, we don't want to hear any of that stuff. Okay, great. Uh, when you get back from your partner's bid here, you're going to see that they've bid two no trump. And this, folks, is our forcing major suit raise. In fact, uh, this is coincidentally the slide I actually have up. So let's jump over to that. And here's what Jacoby Tuno Trump does. First off, it actually shows 13 plus total points and it shows four cards or more in support of the major suit that we've opened, right? So when it goes one of a major, Tuno Trump, this is what we agree it to mean, right? And it's, it's all of these things, forcing to game, it solidifies or it shows that we are playing in this particular major suit. <clears throat> and, <clears throat> and it gives us a little bit of system after this bid is made. And let me show you that system, folks. Here's a good page for you. And this is uh, linked to the notes page. You can just hop onto my site and not only grab this little package of notes, but also the lessons that go along with it if you want more understanding. So take a look, folks. One spade is our opening bid. Our partner bid two, no Trump. Here are our options. And let's take a look at the two different sections that we should be looking at. New suits at the three level are shortness, right? These show one or zero cards in the suit that we're bidding. New suits at the four level actually show a good five card suit. Five card suit with two of the top three honors, right? So we have all of our new suit bids here at the three and four level. This is just your basic Jacoby Tuno Trump responses. Returning to your major suit will show various degrees of strength. Do you guys see the difference here? Four spades is the worst. Why is that, folks? Why is the jump to game four spades going to be a worse hand than what three spades would be, which would be a non-minimum hand? Everyone know why this is? It's a very, it's a, it's a cornerstone of our agreements in game forcing auction exactly tom and ann good stuff fast arrival right when we are in a game forcing auction right we know we're going to game the speed at which we get to that game communicates the value of our hand we're going to get a lot of chances to practice that today with the hands we're going to be dealing with so yeah and therese this is a really good statement but it's not necessarily true we're not closing the bidding down necessarily but what we are doing is we are communicating that we do not have a desire to go forward currently. Our partner could have a massive hand and still want to go forward, but, 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 we always, always, always want to just bid the values that we have in our hand and let our partner make that better decision. Good question. Uh, 
what if we have a singleton ace? Here it is irrelevant, right? We are going to show it in this spot right here, unless we had a second five card suit to bid also. So here it's all just about the length. And the other thing is even when you have a minimum opening, let's say you open some 11 point hand and you have shortness, you always show shortness. Bidding back to your major suit will simply deny shortness every single time. So with this chart, in, in the our back pocket, let's hop back in and make our bid at this table here. So you've opened one spade, your partner bids two no trump. And just uh, so you guys know, the reason I have myself seated at both chairs today is because the robots play some weird agreements in two ways. Uh, one is they play 0314 for their key card. We're going to play 1430. And they also don't do a good job of making control bids, which are essential to finding a way to bid slam. So we're going to see a few of those today, we hope. But let's start with our response here. What would you do now that you know these systems? One spade, two no trump to you. Make your bid. And maybe I, let's see if I can uh, see if I can edit this page on the fly and give you guys a little bit of a sneak preview of the possibilities all right those are our new suits but guess what we don't have any shortness all right so ooh jeffrey or jeff it has a has a pretty good uh, thing here we bid four spades with the hands that are our total total minimums which would include like a 12 point hand that's 5332 three, maybe and is terrible an 11 point hand right balanced 5332 three, we actually not only do not have a minimum we have a little bit more than than what you think because of what jeff is talking about that sixth spade even though we do not have great spades as far as the values that we hold in the suit <clears throat> we happen to know based on this tuno trumpet that we have 10 total trump that is a win folks and this is also 13 total points right think of how many hands you'll open one spade there's a lot of 11 point hands in there right there's a lot of 12 point hands in there as well you're at a full 13 with a sixth spade so this is a very important concept that i'm getting to right away which is important which is which i'm happy about you bid four in these situations and op opposite Jacoby Tuna Trump when you have a hand that you're embarrassed to put down as dummy. You're not happy with your opening bid. This is too good for that, folks. It is a three spade bid. Everyone okay with this? So many of you bid four spades and I see it, but three spades is extra values and the extra value comes in the fact that you're not a total minimum. You have a full 13 and that sixth spade is really good more a bigger trump fit is always better everyone okay picture a four spade bid and i hope we see one i I've, I've generated the hands in such a way that we might be able to see a real minimum right but um if we don't just remember 11s really balanced 12s with only five of the suit those are the ones we jump to four spades with good good all right so after three spades our partner bids four clubs and here it comes, folks. So what is what is that, folks? What the heck is partner doing there? Yeah, so we want to make sure we recognize that this has to be some sort of desire to play spades higher than game okay uh, we know we're playing spades we have a nine card fit we've gone through the jacoby tuno trumpet and it's very important to discuss this there are there will never be a control bid made here right because we have to respond to jacoby tuno trump first but after we exit that response this is normal stuff and this new suit here says that we have either first or second round control in the club suit so our partner there has said to us they have either the ace of clubs a protected king of clubs or what else could they have what's a outside possibility in these situations <clears throat>
Yeah, a singleton or a void would be a spot where you would expect them to be making this bid, right? So here in these spots, we happen to know that partner has either the ability to win the first trick or the second trick. Everyone okay with that? All right, so now what the heck do you want to do? Make your bids. And let's, uh, let's just make sure we know one other thing as well. When partner bids four clubs, they are certainly showing a hand that is also not a minimum hand, right? They are showing a hand that has extra values and wants to actually pursue slam. And this is interesting, right? You can... You could go a couple different ways here. Your, your hand is actually a minimum for what you've told the partner. And Therese, Therese is, is making a very, good, uh, a very good statement here. You are a minimum, especially considering you've already bid three spades. You do happen to have three really juicy cards in your hand, and that uh, control bid and clubs didn't necessarily make your hand, your position there, lesser, right? So if you have two options, and let me show you what they are. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make both bids for us. Your first option is to say, hey, I, sh I showed kind of enough to bid extra values, but now I just want to let my partner know that I'm a total minimum for this. And that's not terribly unreasonable. With your 10-card fit, though, and the fact that you have the king, not only the king of diamonds, but also the very important thing is you have the ace king of hearts as well, right? That could be a suit partner's really worried about, and they, they may be trying to discover that here, but we don't want to skip over what we have. This would say you have first or second round control in diamonds. And guess what you're going to get back, folks? You're going to get back for no trump. And let me remind you of your agreements. Now, let me actually, I'm going to give you guys a poll. Um, I, I'm actually interested. I don't know how many of you are watching right now, but this is a good question. What kind of ace asking are you playing? Are you playing? And 1430 is one, 0314. Those are both key card versions. So I'm going to put key card next to those. And then I'm just going to leave straight old Blackwood. And if you don't play any of these, just say, what the heck is an ace asking sequence if you want in the chat? <laughs> but I'm curious to see what, what everyone plays. The robot on bridge base plays 0314. Um, and, uh, it's, I mean, that's a lot of partnerships will play that as well. Um, 1430, se it seems like what more people are playing and what, what the majority of people you will see are playing these days in the human being world. So that's the version that I teach. Um, if you're not playing either version, you should start playing one or the other. And it's important because when we find a suit fit, especially uh, when we are wondering whether or not we can play slam, it is very important to have the ability to talk about the quality of the trump suit, especially on a hand like this, folks. This is a pretty interesting one. So let's see what the poll is. Okay, good. So almost 60% of you are playing 1430, 35% of you are playing 0314, and then the rest of you are playing just regular Blackwood. Uh, good. As long as you have most of you playing key cards, the rest of you that are playing Blackwood, let's slide over to a little bit of key card and maybe we can convert you right now to, to the slightly better version of this. So when we find a Trump fit and we both know it for the most part, right? there are occasions where we can jump to 4 no Trump and it's still key card, but pretty much almost always when we're using this, we know we have a fit in a suit. Forno Trump doesn't just ask for aces now, it asks for key cards. And here are the five key cards. They are all four aces and the king of our agreed upon Trump suit. So rather than four aces, we now have five key cards. And the responses to this are pretty much what you would think. 
you would play five clubs is 14. That's how we kind of come up with the name of it. The five club response shows either one or four key cards. The five diamond response shows three or zero. So there's how you might remember this. The first two responses, 1430, one or four, three or zero. The auction will usually tip you off as to which one of these there they are right and the key cards you're holding in your own hand so don't worry about um, uncertainty and then five hearts shows two without the queen of trumps and five spades shows two with the queen of trumps um this is these two responses five hearts and five spades here are exactly the same regardless of which of those 1430s or 0314s you play um the Jeff asked a good question. Is there an advantage of 1430 over 0314? Uh, sometimes it's situational. Like sometimes one version would have worked better for you because you have more room uh, from a certain bid to make a call. But um, it, it depends on what works for you. If you're used to playing 0314, don't make me convert you. I'll just tell you the reason I teach it this way is solely on a numbers perspective. I find that most uh, people I play with live are playing some sort of 1430 key card. So that's the reason it's here. But if you think about this, folks, I don't want to confuse those of you that may not be playing a lot of this. All we do in each of these versions is we flip flop the first two responses. All right, so if you know how to just differentiate which one you're playing, you'll be fine. It's the same conceptually. So if you choose to play one or the other, you might mess it up once in a while when you go from one to the other, but you'll be okay if you just conceptually remember this is how we do it. All right, so everyone okay here? I went through a lot of stuff just now. Give me, I'm going to give you guys at least about 30 seconds to pop a question in if you have it about this because we're, we're going to slide back to that hand and start responding in a second. And if you need me to, you, you can ask me to come back to the slide page and I can bring it back here as well. Uh, these are also the notes you can grab right through that link at the end of class as well if you're wondering. So don't worry, I don't have to copy everything down or anything as we're going. Sit back and make your choices. All right, let's dance. So here we go, partner bid for no trump. We know we're playing spades, right? So this has to be some sort of key card for us. So how many key cards do we have? And what do we bid? How do we show this? I'm going to ask you guys today to play 1430, 1430. Um, if you play 0314, revert back to that right after this lesson. Yep, there it is, folks. Just five clubs. We have one key card, right? It's right there. We do have a whole bunch of trumps. We have some good cards, but all we have is one key card, so we show it one or four key cards. And then our partner actually bids five no trump. What is that? Here it is, folks. The five no trump bid. This is a this is this should happen every time it's supposed to happen. And and what it is, folks, is it's a way to confirm for both of us that we have all of the key cards and the queen of trump, meaning all the cards we were looking for in our in our uh, key card asking sequence, we found them all. Right? We have every single one. And it asks partner to bid the lowest king they have. So they're going to bid their kings up the line to show uh, the fact that they have that specific king. It's what's called specific kings. We don't need the number anymore. We've already talked about the king of trumps. So that's a card that's already known in these auctions. So we bid specifically which kings we have, almost exactly like a control bid would be made. So when I tell you that, let's hop back over to our hand. Make your call to 5 no Trump. Partner bids that. And in these circumstances as well, 
you remember we're at the five level so i see some of you bidding five diamonds they're gonna they're gonna call the director over there and say insufficient oh my goodness <laughs> and don't worry it'll be a very easy correction to six <laughs> so this is also a situation that you might not respond your king is sometimes you might just bid a grand slam let's say in this auction instead of a 13 count we have like a 16 count we, we wouldn't care about, you know, we, we have kings, we have two of them, but we would certainly want to bid more based on the fact that we have hidden values our partner can't know about. In these auctions where we might be, we might have wanted to have signed off in four spades rather than made that control bid, some of you wanted to, we just show our kings, right? We show our kings because remember, partner is obligated to make this call whether or not they really do want to proceed to seven. Uh, so in this case, we bid, we bid our king of diamonds, Partner bids six spades. Anyone else want to bid? I will leave this last one up to you. You can press forward or you can sit back and relax. Your choice. All right, some passers. Ooh, there's Brandon's got his bidding shoes on today. Grand Slam. I tell you what, if you bid Grand Slam, uh, I'm going to do what most of the people have done so far. And uh, we have two Grand Slam bidders and most passers. I'm going to pass, and I'm going to show you that if you did bid a Grand Slam, you made it. So you, you actually see a winning finesse. And, folks, these aren't hands I've kind of dealt up. These are hands I've constrained in a way that we're probably going to get some slam decisions on them, and that's why we're playing them this way. Um, here you're going to be kind of destined to taking a club finesse, and it happens to win, folks. So if you bid seven, you actually got to a grand slam that was on a finesse, which meant you did really well because 50% of the time you made it, and here you did. However, if the king is in the other hand, we are down now, and now we uh, – we, we could potentially have taken a diamond finesse to throw away a club. So there's maybe more than one way to play this. Not the worst Grand Slam I've ever seen. But usually you, when you're being a Grand Slam, especially if you're just playing at the bridge club, you want to essentially be able to count to 13 tricks in your hands. right? You want to just say, okay, I know so much and I have so much information on my own that I know we can take all 13 tricks. So it would be silly of me not to bid Grand Slam. But without that level of certainty... A very, very good rule of thumb when you're playing for a good score is to just not bid Grand Slam unless you have that good granular information about that number of tricks. How we doing, folks? I mean, honestly, when partner bids five no trump, though, and you have two kings and an outside queen of clubs, it is pretty uh, It's pretty interesting to want to bid seven. So I, I, I'm not upset about uh, those of you that bid seven, for sure. Uh, a little confused about the six diamond bid. So, so here we... We haven't necessarily shown this the king of diamonds, Jeff. We have shown second round control in diamonds. That's the key. So we could be showing, oh, no, wait, wait. I, I beg to differ, Jeff. You're right, because we did not show shortness. So technically, yeah, you could have deep, deep game. If you have partners paying attention, and so are you, Jeff, you are right. Because of two things, the fact that we denied shortness, and then we showed first or second round control in diamonds. We've shown this card, but maybe partner isn't sure whether it's the ace or the king, but I don't know. They probably have to be sure because they just bid five no trump and showed all the key cards. So in a super, super deep game situation, you are right. Six hearts could probably be your best bid. Everyone, Do you guys see where Jeff's coming from there? Very interesting point, and it is true, right? Well, yeah, that's what we're saying, Ed. That's what we're saying. We're saying the King of Diamonds is kind of a known card because of the way the auction has gone. The fact that we do not have shortness, right? When we responded three spades to two no trump, we denied a single ten or a void, right? So now when we bid four diamonds, it's either the ace or the king. But when partner now, when partner now bids five no trump confirming all the key cards, now we know, oh, well, partner has the ace of diamonds, obviously. So they know, and this is weird. You have to be in a little mind meld with your partner. 
They should know we have the King of Diamonds because we've shown that second round control and no shortness. Therefore, the King of Hearts is the correct king to show. But I will tell you this, even for that awesome uh, point, Jeff, if you bid six hearts, partner's still going to bid six spades because they were looking for the King of Clubs, basically. They're hoping that we have that card so they can either rough it out or just take all the club tricks. But very, very cool stuff in the first hand. And you found something that I even missed there, Jeff, so that's awesome. Uh, Benjamin, yes, sometimes you do. Uh, the question is, do you ever gamble on six no trump for match point purposes? Yeah, and and the answer is when you, when you just think you're taking 12 tricks in both of them. Like on this hand, if you knew from the South's perspective, let's say South got the key card in some weird way, you would know you were taking six spades, you were taking two hearts for eight, two diamonds for um, 10, and the ace of clubs for 11. So maybe you don't bid um, six no trump because you might have to lose a trick there, right? But if you do, and if you have to lose it in both contracts, it's going to be the same score. So very difficult to know, right? Um, but when you think you're, when you think you might want to bid seven because you have extra tricks and you can't quite get there, if you think it's safe, six no trump could be an option. Yeah, very cool, very cool stuff. That was a great first hand. And that's the that's the first hand I've dealt. These are all random hands. So let's get into another one. What I've done is I've constrained these hands to give us around 30 plus points. And this time we're going to have a spade fit pretty much almost every time, right? Because uh, we want to use some of the tools we have available to us. But we're going to sit on different sides of the table from time to time. We're going to be north and south, dealer and non-dealer. And we'll have chances to kind of do a whole bunch of stuff. So first off, what are you opening this hand, folks? Make your choice. Hey, Alan, what's up? I don't know. I haven't seen you live in a, in a long time. It's good to see you. Always see you commenting on the uh, weekly challenge, though. Thanks for those. All right, so I am a big-time proponent of opening one no trump, even when I have a five-card major, except, except when I have 17. Uh, this is too strong for one no trump. And and this is not a uh, – it's not because I well, – I, I do want to bid my five-card major for sure even when I open a no trump. But when I have a maximum, 17 total, I'm already at that high end, and, and I have a good five-card spade suit. So this hand is actually worth 18. I still want to do what I saw somebody suggest in the chat. My intention is to open one spade, and if my partner bids a no trump, I will raise the two no trump to show 18, 19 balanced. If they do something else, well, we're in a game force, and now we're going to have a lot of fun, right? So here, this hand is too strong. And this would be the same, folks, if I take the spade suit and I make it the diamond suit. I would still open one diamond, right? Same idea. I plan to rebid two no to show a balanced distribution, but I equate this to 18, and that's how I'm going to bid it. Well, Makes sense for everybody? I'm so glad to see you guys opening a no trump with a five-card major. So many people drop that ball all the time. But when you're a maximum 17, open your major and then rebid two no trump. Or let's say you have this hand and you're a 14-point hand. I would happily upgrade that to one no trump, right? So that's how we're doing it here. So... Here we go. One spade by us. Yeah, exactly. That Lots of really quick tricks as, as well, David. So it's a super nice hand. And we'll be surprised when it goes to no trump across from us. So make your bid now. That's a good place to be, Alan, for sure. <laughs> And sorry for that. I started about a half hour earlier today. I just have a little bit of a, I have a, a conflict after at about 4.30, so I wanted a little bit of time for that. So glad to get this off this week, though. Yeah, so this is a classic situation. We don't have shortness. We have more than our minimum, right? So, and this three spade bid that we're about to make is very, very wide ranging, right? It's wide ranging because it 
it could be this, hey, I have a solid 13 that I don't want to show a total minimum with, or it could be a hand that is massive and is planning on bidding a slam. This one's kind of right in between, I would say, right, right in between, like, um, a, a reasonable extra values and a massive hand, right? Because we have a nice 17 with a little bit of this sh shape over here. And after three spades, our partner is going to bid four clubs. Make your bid, folks. Hey, David, the, the fun part about this Tuno Trump bid is when you get more advanced, I don't know if you're talking about the same sort of thing that uh, a lot of people are playing, you can add a power of system for your responses after two no trump like three clubs could show your minimums or your maximums with shortness without shortness and there's a lot of ways you can go about making this response structure more robust um, but the simple stuff is usually good enough to get you to the most uh most spots that you're going to see the the most often for sure yeah so here's the thing for me if partner is going to bid four clubs do do we have well let's ask this question what does four clubs communicate to us or what should it communicate to us it does a few things right it communicates first or second round control in clubs but more importantly it communicates a hand that is that has extra values for the bid that they've made and the bid that they made is 13 plus points, right? So they're saying that they don't just have 13 plus points and a control in the club suit. They have a control in the club suit and they have desire to play slam. They have desire to play higher than game. And what do we have? We have 17 points and we have no suit that we have two quick losers in. So if we're really going to do this, all right, we're probably just going to bid for no Trump. Does that make sense? Everybody okay with that one? All right, so partners already said, okay, I am interested and I have extra values to go to slam. And you have way extra values to go to slam, right? So you're, you're kind of making this, the decision for your side here. All right. So now what? We bid, we bid four no trump. Partner's actually going to bid five hearts. Well, and well, what I'm saying is we happen to know that we very likely have the values for slam because of what partner is suggesting. And we do not have any suit in our hand that is at, is at danger of losing two quick tricks, meaning they're not going to be able to cash an ace and a king and beat us right off the bat. That would mean we'd need to make more control bids in order to decide if we could, in fact, play slam. But here, we don't have any holes necessarily. We may have a loser, right? But we don't have any any glaring two-trick losses, basically. All right, so how many key cards do we have, folks? Always put it together with what you have. On this hand, you happen to have three key cards, correct? But, but you do not have the queen of trumps. In order to bid five no trump, you need all the key cards and the queen of trump. Because remember, when you bid five no trump, you are trying to play grand slam. We never want to play grand slam without the queen of trump. Okay? And the minimum baseline that we need for a small slam, the sixth level, is four key cards plus the queen of trump. We happen to have five key cards. So yeah, if we get this response, we would just be bidding six spades. And I'm going to tell you, the robot was super aggressive. And when I say the robot, me. <laughs> I honestly, we, we'll debate the, the North hand's choices right now after they pass. But here, North could also have kind of slowed down the auction and just bid four spades. However, take a look, folks. It's a really good slam as long as either spades are dividing evenly or we can pitch one of our diamonds away on one of those other cards here. I mean, it's like an embarrassment of riches. We're, we're very likely going to be making six and may make seven on any sort of weird lead by the opponents, right? So the spades are 2-2. Two, two. Uh, but look at that north hand. It's pretty close, right? They've shown their Jacoby 2-0. They see partner bids three spades. 
it's a tough situation here. There, there is another bid available uh, for those of you that might be trending toward the expert level, and it's called the uh, three no Trump bid here. It's, it could be a serious or a non-serious slam try. It's a nuanced approach to kind of have a wider range of ways to show interest in slam, and it's super useful when you have clear major suit fits. Um, but in this situation, with the aggressive attack by North, South kind of knows, okay, it's slam is super likely because not only do I have lots of extra values, my partner has just alluded to their extra values and make a clear point. And let me, uh, let me show you the page you'll find in the notes on this one, folks. Um, the control bids, the control bids that we're making are twofold, right? They're always going to be, hey, I have control in the suit, but they also are saying, look, I wouldn't be doing this if I didn't have a desire to play higher than game. And in these cases, I am showing that by making these sorts of bids. And that's how we can kind of get together and realize whether or not we should go forward towards that slam or we should bail out at a lower level. Everyone okay with that? Doing well so far? Let's keep dancing. And don't worry, if you have a question about a previous hand, I actually do have a results stream here, I think. Yeah, I do. Okay, good. So I set that up. So if we want to go back and look at a hand that I've gone past, we can always go back. So do not hesitate to ask any questions. Uh, let's let's play play it again, Sam. What do you open with this hand? Just to drive home our, our point here. Nice. Now we're driving the same train, right? Too good. Too good for one no. Give me a 16 count or a 15 count with the exact same shape. And I'm a one no Trump trainer every time. I'm going to bid a no Trump 100 times out of 100. Here, I'm going to bid a spade the same number of times. Let's get onto that correct screen here. And guess, <laughs> shocking, that partner might make this bid. But here it is, folks. One spade, two no. Make your call. What do we do with this hand? Yep, same thing as last time, right? We have extra values. We don't have shortness. So we're just going to bid three spades. And then partner is going to bid four clubs. Yeah, Benjamin, exactly. I liked last hand better, for sure. But even a solid 13 and 14 should be bidding three spades here. So I have certainly much, much more than that. Don't think of this as extras. I want you to I want you to think of four of a major, all in response to Jacoby Tino Trump folks. But when we bid four of a major, that is our minimum. So three of a major is simply a non-minimum, right? So it's better than the bad ones, right? Good, good. Go ahead and make your bids after four clubs. I'm seeing a few already. This is excellent. So once again, we should expect partner to have extra values here for this bid, right? So they're not going to be making this without their extra value. So confidently, we should really expect to have slam most of the time. But this is different than last hand. This time, we happen to have a suit that is challenging for us. And it could be challenging to the contract because we don't have the ability to stop hearts if they have the first two tricks, right? We don't have first or second round control of hearts. Now, partner may very well have first, second, or both, right? But we don't know yet for sure. All we know is partner has us little extra values and they have controls and clubs. And they have a good spade fit. So we don't want to shut it down. We just now show our control for diamonds. Okay, partner, you showed me you had extra values in control and clubs. I have extra value and control in diamonds. And now partner says, well, I've heard enough. I'll bid for no Trump. And you will make your response, folks.
Yeah. Two key cards. The Ace of Spades. And the Ace of Diamonds. And, though, the Queen of Trumps. Don't get confused. The Queen of Trumps is not a key card. It just happens to be a card we get to describe in our sequence. And let that be a lesson to all of you playing normal Blackwood. This is why key card Blackwood is so superior, right? We get to talk about the Trump suit. And we get to stay out a lot of bad slams as a result. And we get to a lot of good ones uh, as well. So here are five spades, two with the queen. And as it turns out, partner just bids six spades. Uh, there's debate. Well, in fact, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you guys a, a little something here. I just didn't want to go too far down the rabbit hole on this. All right, so if we play six spades, ha, huh, it's funny. We actually did probably well to stay in six spades because we're mirror images of each other on both sides of the table. And I want you to look at the high card points. We have 15 opposite 17 and a nine card spade fit. So that's 32 total points. And we're not going to come close to making slam, most likely. Everyone see that? As long as they just make a club lead over there, the queen of clubs, you see what's going to happen? We have to lose a spade. And then we end up having to lose either a heart or a, well, I guess, eh, too, too bad we have to draw all the trump from dummy, right? We, we'd love to be able to end play our west player. Right, but we can't do it because we have to draw all four rounds of Trump. All right, so agreed, David, and that's what I was going to discuss. The North player, when you determine that you have all the key cards and the Queen of Trump, which is what they've determined, right? They know that we've shown two with the Queen, and they in fact have shown have three key cards in their own hand. You should just always bid five no Trump. The reason I didn't is I could see kind of the disaster coming in just six, so I wanted to kind of end the auction. But in general, it is correct to do that. The robot or my player decided to just bid bid six to end our auction, but five no Trump gives partner the option of kind of bidding more. And it brings us both into the conversation that we actually have all of these key cards. And just for a reminder of that, folks, that is also back on our five no Trump bid uh, page, right? We, we basically need to do this every time we have it. And it guarantees that we have all of those. All right, let's dance, folks. Ooh, Benjamin brings up a really good one. I was hoping we could maybe see something like that today. Um, but when you have 10 trumps, and the how you, here's how you would know that. Partner opens a spade, you have a five-card spade holding. Or you open one spade, partner bids Jacoby two no trump, and you have six spades. You always have the queen of trumps, right? So if asked about key cards and you could give the queen as a response, you should. And if not, right, if you're in a situation where partner responds and they don't have the queen, you just have the queen, right? So, yes, it is equivalent to having the queen, and it always should be. Some of you want to open this a heart, and I promise you they will call the director to your table, and they will say, you are bidding out of turn because it is your partner's opening bid. And there it is, folks. <laughs> One spade. Make your call. Some of you might be toying with different choices here. And this is going to be our last straight up spade slam hand. After this hand, I'm going to constrain the deals and kind of open it up to a whole bunch of different shapes. So we'll have a little more fun toward the end. All right, so here... Very important. This five card heart suit is going to be amazing in spades. We have already found a nine card spade fit. Here are my thoughts on splinter bids. I, I don't splinter with singleton aces if I can avoid it, right? And and here I can avoid it, right? The the singleton ace of clubs is awesome and it's going to be awesome and we're going to treat it as awesome for the rest of the hand. We don't necessarily need partner to know about it. In fact, think of this, which of our hands, uh, well, 
Does our hand have more information than partners at this point? It, it always will, right? Our, our, our heart suit's so amazing. We have the singleton ace of clubs. So we should really want to bid Jacoby Chino Trump with this hand because we're going to get to find out what partner shape is like on their side, right? Do they have shortness in one of these suits? Is it hearts, right? We are going to usually want to direct the auction with hands like this if we can, right? So we want to keep it a little lower as well because we're going to have more room to discuss and we're just going to get more information that way. So a spl I like a splinter with kind of, uh, you can do it with extra values, but it not 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 an ace, right? It's just not not good enough, right? It's not a, it's not a good idea to do that because you're just, it's such a valuable position. So here we're just going to bid two now and partner is going to bid three spades. Make your call, folks. We need to investigate, right? We need to make sure we're not wide open in diamonds. Even though partner is showing a non-minimum hand, you can conceivably construct a whole bunch of non-minimum hands that they do not have the ace and king of diamonds in, right? So here, time to discuss. We want to play slam. We're very confident we're going to at least try, but we need to make sure it is safe and partner tells us that it is safe-ish, at least, from what they're saying. Make your bid now, folks. Yeah, and I'm glad everybody's on the same page here. Notice we can do a combination of all of these things, right? We can make control bids and then bid key card Blackwood, right? That's why we want to do this. The control bids sometimes will be the ones that tell us, tell our partnership that we should be bidding key card, right? So here we bid for no Trump. Both of us are showing the ability to explore slam. And when we do that, partner is going to bid five spades. Make your call, folks. Yeah, you know you have all the key cards and the Queen of Trump. Even if you don't have desire to go further, folks, it's important to just get that bid on the table and tell partner, hey, we found them all. Now, remember, in these auctions especially, these Jacoby Tino Trump auctions, partner just hasn't had a chance to kind of limit their hand in any meaningful way other than they didn't have a total minimum, right? So they could be anywhere between like 15, maybe they have 18 or 19, right? So maybe our five no Trump bid gives them the reason to bid a grand slam. Uh, as it turns out, they simply bid six clubs as a response. And now it is back to you folks. Yeah, if I were sitting on this side of the table, here's here's what everything, partners told us everything about this hand, especially that they do not have shortness. That's the big thing. So if partner has two hearts, let's say, I'm probably going to be able to rough out a heart and dummy, which means I'll take four hearts, I'll take four spades as eight. I'll take the ace of clubs and the king of clubs, because that's what partners just shown. And then I'll take the Ace of Diamonds. Is that enough? Probably not, right? If I take all five hearts and partner only has five spades, I take all five spades. That's 10. The Ace and King of Clubs, that's 12. And the Ace of Diamonds, that's 13. Mm. 
But what's the rule, folks? If you're just playing normal bridge, what would you do? What should you do? If you're not 100% certain, it's okay just to bid six spades. And Therese, I get it. I totally get what you're saying. And you don't have to complicate it at all, right? You could have bid just six spades over five spades if you wanted to, but the best way to do this is to make sure you both know what's going on here. And then you can bid six spades. Now, yeah, the club rough in this hand will provide an extra trick. You're right. But is it possible we have a diamond loser sometimes? I would say it's possible. It is possible, right? It's it's maybe even likely we're making Grand Slam. But should we necessarily bid Grand Slam here without that perfect information? Close, but no cigar. As you can see, this hand's going to be super easy. Your partner actually had four hearts. So this hand's going to play itself. You're going to pitch a small diamond on dummy. But if you give dummy like maybe a couple hearts and four cards in the diamond suit in the same holding now maybe we're in trouble right if we can rough out hearts maybe we can pitch one of those but you know you can see how this could go differently based on a different shape right if i could see that dummy and i could i would have advocated for seven for you for sure <laughs> exactly jeff good stuff all right so let me let me massage these hands now i'm going to take out our major suit fits i'm not going to say we're not going to find a major suit fit at all but i've kind of now just constrained the deals to be about 31 plus points to our side so let's see what kind of trouble we can get into on these last few boards let's dance all right looks like our partner's opening the bidding or let's see if they will they will they'll open a club make your call folks and just to give you a little lay of the land here, when this hand pops up, you're thinking slam right now, right? So your job isn't to bid slam right away. It's to see which of these slams you might want to be bidding. So you start slowly, right? No need to jump around. Always do exactly what everybody's doing in the chat, which I'm super happy to see by all of you. Good crew here. One heart. Right? Hey, partner, I have four or more hearts. I have six or more points. And now they come back and bid a spade, which you play kind of the modern method. So this should be some sort of unbalanced hand with four spades. Make your bid now. In fact, it's funny, uh, if I uh, trot back to the notes page, I can show you that uh, this was the first part of, uh, of our slam lesson, kind of the tools that get you towards slam. Uh, the other one was, was this bid, fourth suit forcing. I, I didn't include this in the notes, but it's pretty funny it comes up. Our hand is massive, right? We still, we don't necessarily know where we're going, right? But we do know that... Um, we have a heck of a heck of a strong hand and we may in fact want to play in clubs and if we can get to some sort of key card sequence that might be better but first things first we want to just make sure we know we're going to game and that's what two diamonds is it is artificial it is game forcing right and it just says partner tell me more about your hand and for partner they decide to bid three clubs which we can debate later but that's their choice with their hand. So we weren't bidding fourth suit forcing to find a heart fit, right? We were honestly just slowing it down because of our values. What the heck do we do now? So this is a fun one. I mean, I would be choosing between 80 different things in my head, right? But here's what you can agree, and it's a very good agreement to have. I, I, I like, I like, I'm looking at some of these bids. They're distracting me because they're, they're good choices, by the way. If you jump to Forno Trump after partner opens or rebids one of their suits, and it's a jump to Forno Trump, that should 
just be understood to be key card within your partnership unless you've agreed upon a different fit previously. So those of you that bid for no Trump, that is a very reasonable choice here. I love the six club bidders also, Jeff, Alan, David. There's something to be said, especially in certain partnerships for simplicity, right? You know you belong in SLAM. You also know partner doesn't have support for hearts. They have an unbalanced hand and they have more clubs than normal, right? They're not going to have a hand like this without some number of reasonable clubs, right? And for no Trump, it's it's not the greatest thing to play over minor suits, but it's the only tool we have. Uh, the key thing is like, what is partner going to tell you? Well, you have four out of the five key cards already, and you may even have a nine or 10 card club fit in this case. Partner has to have some points somewhere. So honestly, I'm going to take the easy way out and bid six clubs. But to be honest, Borno Trump, have this discussion with your partners over opening bids, the direct Borno Trump bid, which honestly, I can't see when this would ever happen, but just have this agreement. But more importantly, over a rebid of partner suit. This is a kind of a grayish one, but like a club, uh, a spade, two clubs, four no Trump, right? A diamond, a heart, three diamonds, four no Trump key card for that suit that you just rebid and showed extra length in. Reasonable agreement to have, cuts out any confusion, but let's just see what we buy. Um, I'm gonna pass as the North hand and we're gonna see it. Not the worst slam ever. In fact, it's gonna be really good because we're gonna get to pitch those spades on those good hearts, right? So, and you're right, David, we do have grand slam here, dude. We, this is a hand that we're gonna make grand slam pretty much 100% of the time because we get to pitch away those spades and dummy and a rough a spade over there with our 10 card club fit. So for no Trump would have gotten us what? They would have shown us one key card and we could ask for the queen, but it's in the club situation. So we'll probably just get to play six clubs. It's a magical hand. Do you know what the most magical card partner has is? It's the singleton queen of hearts. <laughs> it gives us, it gives us two pitches from dummy rather than just one. So it's a, it's a magic card for sure. It keeps a finesse off the table, but good stuff. And honestly, I love seeing hands like this that are relatively simple on, on the surface, right? Your partner opened the bidding. You have 20 points or 21 points, right? You know, you're going to slam, try to find the best and safest way possible to get there. Uh, well, Benjamin, it's, I would say partners almost 100% to have five clubs on this hand, but I suppose I could see a hand. I mean, I don't know. In my partnerships, I would say partners almost 100%. In other partnerships, I don't know if I would say that three clubs is always that. Because remember, this is not necessarily the most um, natural auction. The two diamond bid was more of a fourth suit forcing bid. So sometimes three clubs is not, hey, I have extra clubs. It's, hey, I don't have three card heart support. I don't have a diamond stopper, okay? So here it could be different in this way, but the fact that they didn't open a diamond is a big kind of, you know, alarm bell to the fact that they have club length. I totally agree. Um, Long-winded answer, I know, to that question, but let's let's do one more. I will go into a little bit of overtime here because I, I just, I love slam hands. And I, I'll, I'll show you guys, I'm, all I'm doing is sitting at a bidding table at this point. Um, and you can set these up on bridge base, set it up with your partner, or you can put a robot across this, the uh, screen from you and you can constrain the hands to a certain point count. And you'll have these sorts of decisions. Uh, this is a very easy decision for us right away. We're gonna bid a club. Partner's gonna bid a spade. Make your choice, folks. And uh, just to circle back, a club, because we're 3-3 three, three in the minors, we always open clubs when we're 3-3, three, three, and we always open diamonds when we're 4-4. Four, four. Perfect one, no Trump rebid. 12 to 14, balanced, we're there. If I can get to the right side of the screen, I will make it. And now partner bids, guess what? Two diamonds. Alert. What is that showing, folks? Minor, major, no Trump, new minor. Hey, right, partner, I want to know more about your major suit holdings. We happen to have two things we can tell them, and this is a very cool hand to discuss. 
I will recommend this way to you. Others, there are many ways you can do this in this situation, but here's what I recommend. Treat that three card holding in your partner's original major as your most important piece of information. All right, so that two diamond bid is new minor forcing. It shows at least an invitational hand and some sort of desire to discover what's going on in the majors. Um, if you didn't have three spades and you have four cards in the heart suit, then you would show your four card heart suit in this situation as well. So you can do one or the other. I recommend just keeping it to the original major. However, there are in, in expert partnerships, and in fact, some of mine, I would reverse that, right, to try to find four four fits. Uh, but when we bid two spades, partner just jumps the four no trump. Now, what my question to you is, what do you think this is without discussing anything with your partner? You didn't have any discussion other than, hey, you play key card blackwood. Well, what would you think this would be? Ah, Benjamin, not if they were 5-4, right? If they had five spades and four hearts, they would, in fact, bid a spade, and then they would come back and bid new minor forcing. So so they, they do not deny four hearts at all. Uh, so they could certainly have uh, have bypassed hearts if they had longer spades. Very good uh, statement, though. It's good stuff. Yeah, it, it has to be kind of obvious, right, folks? Like, they have lots of other forcing bids they can even make from this point forward. So for no Trump is just, okay, partner, tell me the key cards you have in spades. And what's our answer, folks? Our answer is, can we stop playing now? <laughs> we... We have no key cards, and we're like the ugliest hand of all time. We're just flat, four, triple, three, no roughing value even, and partner wants to play spades. So, yeah, three or zero, folks. We have we have zero key cards. Partner now bids five hearts. What's that? Yeah, so when we respond five clubs or five diamonds to key card, it's uh, one of the two responses that doesn't have the queen involved in it, right? Five hearts and five spades, we talk about the queen. Five clubs and five diamonds, we have nothing to say. So after one of these responses, the next available suit bid by our partner that is not the trump suit asks us if we have the queen of trumps. And if we have it, what do we do? What are our choices? Let's ask that question. I'll give you guys a quiz on the queen ask. And don't worry, folks. This is also in the notes. In fact, there's a couple of good uh, good problems for that right there. It shows you why we need it. So simple way to play this. If you're not, if you make an agreement with your partner, hey, we're not going to be grand slam unless it's super right. The bid of six of our suit just says I have the queen. The bid of five of our suit says I do not have the queen. However, the slightly more advanced version is to just show your kings if you have the queen. So this is just the slightly more advanced version. Hey, partner, uh, if I didn't have the queen, I would have bid five spades. So here I have the queen of trumps, and I might as well show you my king of clubs along the way. However, I'm going to tell you that that is not how this auction was ever going to go. In fact, after five diamonds, partner was going to sheepishly put five spades on the table, and you were going to pass it and hope that you made it. Take a look at the hands, folks. <laughs> you're going to make it okay because you're going to get to pitch some clubs from dummy on those hearts. But really, we have at least two losers on this hand, even if we uh, take a successful spade finesse. So this is a good one to end on, staying away from slam, which is a lot of times why we also use key card or those control bids. We get to avoid playing sometimes even at the five level if we can discover a pitfall for slam earlier. So I hope you enjoyed this hour, folks. I'm glad to be back with you for this bridge quiz. Uh, next week is July 4th week, so you will not see me there other than uh, – uh, for the, uh, obviously, the Wednesday morning game on the 5th, you'll see me. But uh, I'll be back with regular programming after that uh, holiday week for all of you. So I'll take questions at the end here if you have them. 
And if not, I will just let you know that you can hop on these notes and any any more refinement that you want to take a look at, you can grab whatever courses are below that. I think those are the most relevant ones for the things that we have done. Awesome, folks. Very cool. Oh, Laurel, yes. that's I remember the 33 Chiron. Very nice. Peter, thank you very much as well. Thank you all for joining live. And for those of you watching, which honestly, this has been a really popular event to watch on replay. Thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed this and feel free to pop your questions into that uh, chat there as well. Thank you, Barbara. All right, guys. Thank you so much.